Welcome to this presentation on 100 gig testing. This presentation is going to focus on two problems associated with 100 gig, that is lane skewing and lane swapping. I'll explain exactly what that means during the course of this presentation. Before we take a look at 100 gig, let's take a look at where we came from. Let's go back to the days of 10 meg. Many people believe that the smallest packet size is 64 bytes, but remember there is an 8 byte preamble and a 12 byte gap. So all in all, the smallest packet size is really 84 bytes, which is about 672 bits. That means we can transmit one packet at 10 meg every 67.2 microseconds or 14,880 packets per second. If we now step the speed up to 100 meg, we're now transmitting 148,809 packets per second, or one packet every 6.72 microseconds. At one gig, we're really flying. Now we're moving at 1,488,095 packets per second, or one packet every 672 nanoseconds. At 10 gig, we now move 14,880,952 packets per second, or one packet every 67.2 nanoseconds. Again, because it's IP, everything stays the same in terms of packet structure. Finally, we hit the new frontier, 100 gig. At this speed, things are moving at an incredibly fast pace. One packet is being transmitted every 6.72 nanoseconds, and we're moving 148,809,523 packets every second. We're going to need extremely tight resolutions in terms of timing to record this protocol accurately. To put these high speeds into perspective, let's take a look at a few facts. First of all, light in a vacuum moves at 300,000 kilometers per second. Light in a glass fiber, though, due to the refractive index of the glass, moves a little bit slower at about 200,000 kilometers per second. At 100 gigabits, packets can travel every 6.72 nanoseconds. To capture packets and timestamp them, we need 5 nanoseconds of resolution. Obviously, we need the clock to be running at a greater rate than the packet transmit rate to ensure that we capture every packet correctly and timestamp it. In 5 nanoseconds, light has only moved approximately 1 meter down the fiber. This is a very short period of time and needs very tight resolution within the test equipment. During this presentation, we're going to focus on some of the problems that arise between the physical interface and the compact form factor pluggable optical interface. The physical interface is sometimes abbreviated to just the phi, and this interface is actually made up of a number of different components. But we're really going to focus on the MDI, the media dependent interface, which interfaces directly into the CFP. For this presentation, we're going to assume that there are 10 lanes of 10 gig coming from the PHI into the CFP. On this slide, we can see how the PHI interfaces to the CFP, the optical module. Coming from the PHI, we have got 10 lanes, each one of the lanes running at 10 gigabits. Within the CFP is a device known as a gearbox. This performs an inverse muxing function, which basically takes the 10 lanes and creates four lanes running at 25 gig. Each one of these optical outputs, though, is running with a separate wavelength of light, lambda, or sometimes commonly known as a color. After 16,383 blocks, an alignment marker is inserted. This is basically an ID for the lane. It's used to achieve alignment marker lock, and it can also be used to de-skew the lanes. We'll talk about skewing in a few moments. This ID is quite important, as one of the functions it can achieve is to prevent lane swapping. If lanes do inadvertently get swapped in the process for any reason, then the ID can be used to realign the lane on the receiving side and demux the data correctly.
So exactly what is SKU? Well, SKU basically is the difference in arrival time of the blocks coming in from the lanes between the phi and the CFP. It can also occur on the optical output, but in this slide, we're going to focus on the interface from the phi to the CFP. Skew is the difference in arrival times of the blocks on different lanes, and it can occur due to the different characteristics of the components within the phi. Some of these components can have different latency characteristics, for example, which affect the arrival time of the blocks on the different lanes. Skew can also occur simply because some of the traces on the circuit board are either longer or shorter than some of the other lanes. This can also affect the arrival time of blocks of data between the phi and the CFP. On the other side of the CFP, the optical side, we can have optical skew. And skew can be caused for a number of different reasons. It can be due to the chromatic dispersion in the fiber cable. Different lambdas or wavelengths will propagate down the fiber at slightly different rates, which can create difference in arrival times of the different wavelengths. Skew can also occur in fibers of varying length. Under some transmission systems, multiple fibers could be used for each one of the optical outputs. And if these fibers vary in length, this can also create skew. In both of these cases, the skew is static, that is, it's constant. Dynamic skew is where the arrival time varies. This is a little bit like jitter. The skew can change over time. This can occur due to the electronic component variation with temperature. On the optical side of the CFP, we can also have dynamic skew. Again, the skew is changing over time. This can either be due to the wavelength shift with temperature. The lasers will actually vary depending on temperature. We can also have stress within the cable, within the fiber cable itself. This can vary the length of the cable and also create skew. Also, of course, the electronic components within the CFP can vary their uh, properties with temperature. And again, this can cause skew on the optical output. So why test? Well, basically, we're testing the ability of the system to compensate for skew and dynamic skew within the complete system under test. We're also testing the system's ability to realign the lanes that have been swapped. And together, of course, we can introduce skew and lane swapping to make a more rigorous test to test that the system can indeed compensate for these two fundamental problems which could occur. So testing in 100 gig today is focusing on skew rates and lane swapping. And with Spiron's capability to provide resolutions down to five nanoseconds, not only does it make these tests possible, it also makes the results very accurate. Of course, with our technology, we'll also be able to support router and switch testing, layer four through seven testing for application testing, security testing, VLAN, MPLS, video, etc. All the normal Spirant capabilities and features will be supported on the new 100 gig platform available on the Spirant Test Center. Today, though, as I said, many of our customers are focusing on some of the basics, which is basically lane swapping and introduction of SKU. You can see here in this example diagram that we can swap lanes. Here we're swapping lanes 17 and 14 and introducing an additional 43 nanoseconds of skew. On the right, you can see how the lanes have been swapped and how the additional skew has taken that particular lane to an additional skew of 43 nanoseconds. Thank you for watching this presentation on 100 gig testing. For additional information on Spirant products and capabilities, please check out the Spirant website at www.spirant.com. And while you're there, please check to see if there's going to be a live seminar in your area coming soon. For a copy of this presentation, you can visit my wiki at alantestwiki.pbwiki.com. You can download a complete PowerPoint. And if you'd like to look at some other videos, you can also go onto YouTube and search Alan Talks Tech. Once again, thanks for watching.